Magic has a ton of ways to play. These are usually called formats, and I'm gonna explain the most popular ones, and a few others that I enjoy. Formats are split into two categories, limited and constructed. Let's start with limited. In a limited format, you don't actually bring a deck to the event. Instead, you will be getting the cards for your deck at the event. So draft, which is probably the most common, is where you get three packs. Open one up, take a card, pass it to the left, and repeat until all those cards are gone, then crack the next pack, go to the right, and then back to the left for the third pack. You'll create a 40 card deck by taking the cards that you drafted, and also you can add any number of mountains, forests, islands, swamps, plains. Technically, you can use all of the cards, but I would recommend sticking to the 40 card minimum and running between 16 and 18 lands. Draft is an immensely fun format, works best with 8 people, and is really popular, so it should be easy to find a shop that runs it. This is a really great way for new players to get started in the game. It helps you build a collection, and you're on a relatively even playing field with other people. Draft, though, is easy to get into and difficult to master. There are a lot of tips and tricks and a lot you can learn by playing it. Another common limited format is sealed. Similar to draft, you're building a 40 card deck and adding basics, but instead of drafting cards, you're just gonna get six packs and use those. Limited is really common with pre-release events, which are a ton of fun and also really popular. Another great way to get started in the game and really easy to find a shop that actually runs these events. The last limited format I want to talk about is Cube. Cube's a little different. It's where essentially you design your own set. You curate a list of like 360 cards and then shuffle that up and divide them into 15 card packs essentially and draft them. Cubes are really fun projects to work on and can have a lot of cool themes and ideas. It's not usually played at stores, so it's more of like a somebody has a cube and like friends will get together. And if nobody you know has a cube, maybe you should build one and play with your friends. It's really cool. Now let's move on to constructed. Constructed formats are where you bring a deck to the event. Standard is probably the easiest to get into since if you've been playing here and there, maybe doing some drafts, you might already have some of the cards for the decks. Basically, it lets you use cards from the past two-ish years. And every about three months, cards will rotate out of standard and new cards will rotate in. This is good and bad. On the upside, it keeps the format fresh and constantly changing. And on the downside, it means that your deck will eventually rotate out and you'll have to get rid of it and build a new one. Standard prices can range pretty heavily, usually like 150 to 200 ish dollars, sometimes more, sometimes less. It really depends on what's in standard. It used to be the premier most popular competitive format, but since the pandemic and Magic Arena, it's played a lot more online and less so in paper. There's still a decent amount of shops that do play the event, so if you want to play standard, you could probably find one. You could also play on Magic Arena, it's a pretty good alternative. The next format is Pioneer, a relatively new format that still quite hasn't gotten its legs yet. It was started right before the pandemic, and it lost a lot of steam because a lot of stores sort of closed down. Nevertheless, it's a really interesting format. Pioneer is what's called an eternal format, so it includes all cards from standard sets up to a cutoff date. So everything from Return to Ravnica to whatever the most recent set is, is legal. Now this doesn't include supplemental sets, so things like Conspiracy, Battle Bond, Commander Precons, those don't go into Pioneer because they don't go into Standard. Pioneer decks range from around $300 to $600, so a little bit more pricey than Standard, and the lack of popularity makes it somewhat difficult to get into. I'd say if you really want to play Pioneer, make sure you have a shop that actually plays it before building the deck since it might be difficult to find one. Hopefully soon they put Pioneer on Arena. Next is one of my personal favorites, Modern. Another 60 card 1v1 eternal format that includes all cards from standard sets from 8th edition to today, with a few exceptions. Modern Horizons 1 and 2 both skipped standard and went directly into modern, and the Lord of the Rings set is also going to do that for some reason, but otherwise just standard sets. Modern is an amazing format, super rich and diverse, full of tons of interesting decks. It's famously hated by top players because pros can't prepare for every deck they're going to face since there's so many viable decks. Sadly, most decks are in the like $500 to $1,000 range, which really holds the format back. I really hope Wizards starts reprinting more modern cards so that 
we can bring the price of these decks down because honestly this is where i would start if you're playing competitive magic there are top tier decks of every archetype mid-range combo control tempo you name it there's a modern deck that plays it and it's good if you want to get into competitive magic please try modern first if you can if you want to get into modern but you're not quite ready to take the plunge try building a budget version of the deck you want oftentimes creating a suboptimal mana base can shave a few hundred dollars off the price and it won't affect how good the deck is most of the time legacy is another really interesting format now this eternal format includes everything not just standard legal sets but all supplemental sets so this includes commander precon cards this includes Conspiracy, Battle Bond, all those other weird sets. But it also includes a lot of the old reserve list cards that are quite expensive. Legacy is prohibitively expensive, with decks on the low end being $1,000 and it going just up from there. Legacy also has a much less diverse metagame, with Is It Delver being basically the top dog for, I don't know, 20 years. Everybody I know who does play it thinks it's really fun, and most of those people play on Magic Online, where the format is much cheaper. And if you really want to get into Legacy, I would highly recommend that. Legacy isn't played very often in paper, partly because of the cost and just not enough people play Legacy, so it might be hard to find a game store that will actually run events, but it's a really cool and interesting format, and I'd recommend at least checking it out. Now, if you thought Legacy was crazy, Vintage is Legacy on steroids. Where Legacy has a ban list, Vintage just has a restricted list. There are still a few banned cards. Uh, they're banned for very niche reasons, like the ones that you flip cards onto the table like a coin. But for the most part, nothing is banned purely on power level. Except Luris. That card is awful, but we'll ignore that. Now, Vintage allows you to play some of Magic's most powerful cards. The Power 9, like Black Lotus and time walk but this comes at a uh, cost vintage decks range from 15 grand to 90 grand almost nobody plays this actually in paper it's almost exclusively played on magic online where these decks can be built for like a couple hundred bucks vintage is really interesting it has a lot of crazy crazy strategies like decks that don't even have the ability to produce mana but i wouldn't recommend starting here it is still cool nonetheless now if you want a cheaper eternal format popper is an awesome place to start it includes all cards printed as long as they were printed at common and then there's a ban list popper has a ton of cool interesting decks and strategies and because it's all commons the decks are pretty cheap they're usually in the 60 dollar range it's super popular on magic online as well but places will actually run popper events you could probably find a store that does it popper is a amazing format and just because it's all commons don't think that it's slow or weak combo decks can still win the game on turn three aggro decks can still steamroll you by turn four the format is still fast and powerful even though it's just commons if your local shop does play popper i'd probably say this is a good starting place for competitive magic it's a ton of fun and i think one of the most skill intensive formats magic has to offer of all the formats i've talked about so far none of them are as popular as commander commander or edh is a four player free-for-all with a hundred card deck helmed by a commander i made a whole video about the format how to build a commander deck, and I'll put a card to it right here. But in a nutshell, commander is a casual format, usually played, you know, with your buddies, or unlike these other formats I've talked about, there's usually no buy-in. You can just kind of go to the shop and use the table space, play pickup games with, you know, randos that are there. It's a lot of fun, offers a ton of creativity, and is also an excellent place to start. Wizards puts out pre-constructed decks that are ready to go right out the box. You just buy one, sleeve it up, and you're good to go. And also, there are tons of resources online for budget decks or just decks in general that you can take a look at and just buy those lists. A buddy of mine made an excellent mono-red artifact deck on a budget, and I'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out and maybe pick it up yourself. Commander is tons of fun, and if you're just getting started or you and a friend are just getting started, it's an excellent place to start, and almost every shop runs Commander events because it's so popular. So those are the most popular formats, but there's a few other cool ones that I want to shout out. There's Old School, also known as 9394, where you play 
as if it was 1994, and you can only use cards from 1993 and 1994. You cannot play reprints of those cards. This format is not really played by many people, really, at all, but it's interesting. There's also Judge's Tower. Judge's Tower is where you have infinite life, infinite mana, and just a hundred non-land cards in a big deck that both players share. Each player will draw one card a turn, and they have to play it, and they have to attack with it if it's a creature, and they have to use its abilities every single turn. And the first person to make a rules mistake or miss a trigger loses. And my favorite weird format is Mental Magic, where you have 20 life in a 1v1, and one big stack of non-land cards both players draw from. Any card can be placed face down as a land of all basic land types. And any card can be cast as any card with the same mana cost. So if a card is green and one, you can cast it as a Ramping Growth, or you can cast it as a Scavenging Ooze, or as a Regrowth. It really tests your knowledge of cards and coming up with, on the spot, what would be a good card for a good situation. And pro tip, if you find a card that's one black mana, you can cast it as a Thought Seize, force your opponent to reveal their hand, and now they have to declare what every single one of those cards is right then and there. Cards stay as whatever they are in every zone. They don't ever change back once they've been declared as a card. It's a lot of fun and honestly really easy to do. You and a friend can just put a pile of draft chaff together and you can play Mental Magic. Those are all the formats I wanted to talk about in this video, but there are more and weirder ones and some that I might have just never heard of. If you think there's any format I should know about or should have talked about in this video, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this, consider leaving a like. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more.